Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's your boy, Beaky, and let's talk about Division 2 and how it has lost $260 from me and my friend. And it's kind of Anthems, Fallout 76, and this whole entire live service model we have going on in gaming right now. I'm going to be talking about the good stuff about the Division 2 and just why me and my friends legitimately decided not to buy it after playing through the beta. It's a really interesting story. But we also need to touch up again on the PlayStation 4s and PlayStation Pros going ahead and having issues with Anthem. So there's been some solutions gamers have figured out to try to make sure that PlayStation turned back on and Sony has kind of responded in a way about the refunds but I'm not liking the response and I'm going to talk to you guys on what happened when my friends try to get their refund and what happened to other people right now when they go ahead and try to get a refund for this game and of course I definitely want to touch more on live services going forward in gaming because it seems like a lot of games are going this method. Alright, but before we jump into the discussion for today, I just want to ask you guys to let me know what you guys think about the new format. Instead of me just being on camera and then editing the stuff after the fact or me just talking, I thought I'd try something new and have the TV in the background playing some gameplay of something that I'm talking about and chatting with you guys as in a discussion about everything in gaming. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Alright, so the Division 2. Let's just start off with a positive. Me and four of my friends went ahead and, three of my friends, went ahead and jumped in, played the beta, had some fun. We were kicking ass, taking names, taking missions. Story seems to be interesting at the White House. Gear is really easy to um, equip, unequip while you're out in the gameplay, opening up menus. It's really just an evolution of what the Division 1 was. The Division 1 came out with its own problems, but it got updated as the game goes. And they're saying that it has like over 70 hours of just core content when you start now so this has plenty of stuff to play when you go ahead and buy the game now with all that said why would me and three of my other friends all decide suddenly we're not buying this game well what happened in like you know like a clip like this like we were playing all playing together we got off of anthem we got off a of division i mean the destiny you know like we said okay we'll try this out we all playing, we're going through, we're getting to the end of a mission, and well, the servers have crashed. Okay, let's jump back in and try again. You know, the servers have crashed. And then my friend said, I'm done. Then I just said, okay, I guess I'm done. Then I asked the question, so are you guys going to buy it? No. And these guys are just like, yeah, that's it. That's It's over. Like, why am I going to spend $60, $65? When it, actually, six, yeah, 65 when it comes out to tax, so it's 260 for all of us. It's a beta test the game on release, even though this is the demo. Yes, this is the demo, and this we have this problem. But the reason why this hit us so hard is because we were playing Anthem, we were playing Anthem, having all these live services issues. We're constantly buying games as gamers, and it comes out, and then we're testing it out on release. And then me and my friends basically have decided, like, yo, Division might be a great game. It really might be a great game on release, but let's just wait. We're just going to wait until the game has had a few months, worked out the issues. Why do we need to be there day one to experience the server crashes, any bugs that might potentially happen? Yes, once again, this is the beta experience, but too often when you are a gamer, you see the patterns. Let's be realistic. The Division comes out in a few weeks, like really soon. Is this a beta or is this a demo? A beta would be an early phase into the game. This seems more like a demo, just like Anthem had a demo, just like Fallout 76. I think betas should be happening four to five months before the game comes out, so you they really have a good chance of fixing a lot of issues that gamers find in their games. It's just sad to see that we as customers have become the early adopter testers. We're the, we are the testers for the game. And me and my friends have gotten fed up with this practice. And we are just telling Ubisoft and telling the gaming industry when if you put out a demo, if you put out a beta a few weeks before a game comes out and I get server crashes, my, me and my friends have to redo content, redo missions, re-invite everybody, we're just not having it anymore. We're going to wait a few months till the game has been out a while and buy it when it's in a better state. Now, I know some of you guys will be like, why are you punishing Ubisoft and, you know, the division for things that were happening with, um, you know, Anthem and Fallout 76? Well, they're following the same trend. And if when you see a trend in the gaming industry, other developers and publishers start to follow it. They want to do these two weeks, three weeks out betas and demos. And then when the game releases, the day one patch doesn't fix everything. They don't give themselves enough lead time to really work out the kinks for us, the early adopters, the people who might pay for early access even, to really have the best experience. If 
you're going to be paying to get the game early, I actually do think you should be getting a complete good product on release. Now, once again, I'm not talking about the core gameplay of The Division 2. The core gameplay is there. If this is your type of shooting, it's fun, it's interesting, and I liked it. I liked it to the core gameplay enough, right? But in the in the sense, I can wait. If I know who I'm going to play with, I can wait. And I think that's what I want to get from this video to you guys out there as well. You have to be able to convince yourself and your friends that it's okay to let certain releases go by and do not buy on day one release. Do not pre-order certain games. You have to be very confident in the title. Maybe it's a single player game where there's no reason for online connections where you're going to go ahead and like you know get it early. Like my friends in the last video were like, oh, they're going to get um, pre-order Devil May Cry. I'm like, why do you need a de pre-order Devil May Cry? There's no reason to pre-order order the game in my opinion when the game releases just get the game there's no reason to pre-order it especially when you know you're gonna not gonna play it the moment it comes out at midnight they don't usually do that so why not wait till the game comes out see the reviews when they go live and then buy the game just in case there's some big major issues and that's what I want to hear from you guys out there are you guys willing to look past these server issues for live service games and buy them on day one I think me and my friends have been screwed over by Fallout 76 destiny in the past Anthem now that, well, it was four games and we're done. We're just like, we're not going to deal with these crashes anymore. And the live services industry in the video games needs to adjust to where they release fully working products. Now, let's talk about um, Anthem and its problems with the PlayStation 4 messing up hard drives, having to rebuild them. If your hard drives was already messed up, it might actually be crashing all this time, could be messing up your stuff so your save files can't be re gotten back. Well, gamers out there have figured out, you know, like, go into hard reset, you plug out the power, plug it back in, hold on the PlayStation, but the same thing you were doing on PlayStation 3, get into the menu, and then you have to go through, connect your controller by USB, you can't do it wirelessly, and go through some menus to try to get your system back up and running. Still, my point is, you shouldn't have to do any of that. And it constantly crashing your system, if you're playing right now, there hasn't been a fi fix yet, it could lead to your hard drive getting corrupted. If you've had a regular PlayStation since release, you know, what, four or five years ago, it's going to have a toll if you've been one of those people always streaming games, recording games, uh, haven't changed your hard drive, your hard drive's always at 90%. I could see it happening when people have reported it that they're hard drive has gotten corrupted and they have to reinitialize and just you know have to re-download everything that is a hassle you shouldn't have to deal with that as a gamer and i'm glad that there are tricks out there to get the stuff back for people who have having issues and i don't and i still will say it's breaking people to play places i'm gonna say that because if you have to do a fix even if the fix is literally unplugging the power holding down the special the, the button for a amount of time knowing that you have to plug in it with a USB cable you can't use it wireless the controller wireless that's something you have to know and if your PlayStation has never been messing up before then that's an issue and I think a bigger part of this is Anthem with these issues is taking away what I think consoles are supposed to be consoles are supposed to be simplistic easy to understand you grab your controller you hook it up and you play your game yeah, games could have crashes to the main menu every now and then. They could have server issues. That's acceptable. And even Division, like I said, it having server issues, that's acceptable. But turning off my system, having me get a warning that says, oh, you improperly turned off your system, or having to have the person unplug the power of their system. Now, remember, they are unplugging the electricity to the back of the system. The odds of anything potentially negative happening with that is very slim but i could see anthem being a teen game somebody 13 they this happens they freak out they see this and they go online like oh plug out your playstation and now you have somebody who's younger unplugging electricity electricity to this their system right now this is all just potential but you know now they're scared about their parents they broke their system this is stuff that you don't want to happen that certain gamers shouldn't have to really mess with the power plug of your console i, I like you know you just want to leave it plugged in and let it be where it is. That's how I was to work. It's not like the switch where you're taking it on the go as a USB Type C and you you know having fun with. It. You want to let it sit down, let it rock, and then go about your day. And I think it's such a sad thing that Anthem is one of the first games I ever felt like, man. This is more feeling like a PC games with all these damn problems. And I know it's messed up to say this, but as a PC gamer, I'm used to having to troubleshoot and try to fix games, going to the settings, download stuff from online from other gamers who figured out a, you know, unofficial patch. But on PlayStation, there is no solution to that. And that's why it comes to the Sony giving refunds. Sony should be approving all refunds, but now people in my comment section of my last video, which I highly recommend you guys all read those comments, are saying Sony are denying them their refund. And there's even reports out there from other YouTubers, Young 
now, blah, and so on and so forth. You guys know all the big guys. I'm not one of them, so you guys know all of them. That, you know, some people from who contact Sony are getting like, oh, well, we only refund games that are faulty. And the developer hasn't 100% said the game is faulty and they're still working on it. Well, just because they're still working on trying to fix it, they still haven't fixed it yet. So right now, for me as a customer, it is faulty and I want my money back. That's what I don't understand. Just because there's 300 people in queue waiting to ask for their money back doesn't matter. Like if those 300 people are having these hard crash problems with their PlayStation and it's infecting how they use their system. If you bought your system and you want to spend one hour today playing Anthem because you bought the game and you want to play it. If you have to spend even 10 minutes replugging in your PlayStation, reconnecting, going through the load screen, that's a waste. You should have your money back. Even if it's just 10 minutes. I think anything that limits your enjoyability for the product that you buy, especially when it messes with your hardware, is for the <sighs> Anthem for EA if it's on Origin or you know Xbox a refund on the PlayStation I think Sony should go ahead and give people their money back and yes deactivate their access to the game don't give them money back and let them keep the game but you know something needs to be done I really do think Sony's going about this the wrong way with so many um, people going and asking for refunds now it seems like they're denying it because you guys saw in my previous video my friends went ahead there were 50 in queue and they went ahead to try to get their refunds but now that pe people are telling me that the the queue is over 300 people long. If they're trying to call, they're having issues. And I'm like, damn, 300 people in line. You're like 300 in line to talk to customer service? That's like nuts. And then once this person gets through, Sony's telling them no. They're making excuses to the customer service agent. But I understand what's happened. This happens a lot of time in the gaming industry and other um, services industries too. You know, like when they see a bunch of people asking for their money back... And they're like, okay, it might be potentially be fixed or like an update or something like that. And once it know, like once it went from like, oh, maybe a hundred people. I'm saying across the millions of people buying places, a hundred people were asking for their refund. They might approve a hundred, but now it might be thousands of people asking for their money back in the U.S. You know, branch of um, PlayStation customer service, UK branch, the Japanese branch. Now it's like, oh boy, that's a lot of money to give back. Bioware. You got to go fix this. You have to go ahead and fix this. Actually, right in this video, like about to come up, is going to be where we just get our first crash. But I'm going to end the video right here anyways. It's not that The Division 2 is bad in any way. Like I said, it's a pretty fun game. I really feel like people are going to enjoy it. I actually think this game is going to probably get between eight, seven fives up to nines. I, that's what it looks like right now unless there's any major issue. It's just that me and my friends have decided we'll wait till everything's out there. We'll play it in five to six months to a year when we're probably going to get to be able to get games from 40 to maybe even 30 dollars if we get on pc maybe even cheaper than that are you guys willing to wait for these live service games to be in a more completed state before putting your money down to play them let me know in the comment section below it's been Beaky here with the untitled game show let me know what you think of the new format as well just trying something new trying to come back here and have fun gaming and chatting with you till next time peace out